John Schlitt is a classic example of a small town guy getting caught up in a fast lifestyle. In college, John linked up with the rock band Head East as the lead singer. After just one radio hit, record labels came knocking on their door. But John's good guy image didn't quite fit the rocker mentality that Head East needed. So his band manager advised him to party more like a lead singer. John was introduced to cocaine, and in just three months, he was hooked. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. My whole day depended on how much coke I had in my, in my little bottle. So you couldn't even function in the world that you were living in without it? I drink beer to get, get go down. I do coke to get up. And it was just, it was a lousy way to live. And I wasn't living, I was killing myself. It, well, it was so bad, in fact, that they asked you to leave. The band was always number one. Number one uh, uh, next to my life, my family, everything, my health. And all of a sudden, the band's not there anymore. And I'm like a fish out of water. I don't know what to do. John spent the next six months singing, binge drinking, and snorting cocaine. What was this doing to your wife? Right in the beginning of the same six months that I'm heading down, she gets saved, and it becomes a on-fire, heavy-duty Christian. It was by the grace of God that we stayed together because um, there was just, um, when all this took place, um, he was not a, a fun person to be around. He was not, you know, um, he was miserable. Our church was praying for him. I was praying for him. There was a war going on for him. I knew it. The bills were piling up, and John's addictions weren't backing down. One night, he passed out on the couch. And I woke up the next morning, and my one-year-old son was looking at me real strange. Like, why are you here, Dad? I mean, why are you on the couch? It, it was a sweet little innocent thing, but I realized that the animal that was on stage had finally made it home. Then a little voice goes, you know, John, you're worth more dead than alive. And I thought about it, I said, yeah, I sure am. That's a great idea. While the children played on the carpet in the living room, John plotted his own death. I had decided in one quick, one quick instance that this was the best thing for my family. I finally thought of something that I could do for my family. That also happened to be the same day John promised to meet Dorla's pastor. I went because I wanted her to remember that I tried. So when I finished, my, when I finished myself off, she would say, well, he, he did go talk to the pastor. The pastor challenged John's view of God. You don't know the Jesus that loves you. You don't know the Jesus that has a plan for your life. You don't know the Jesus that knows exactly what you're thinking right now. The power of God's presence knocked him to the floor, and John gave his life to Christ. The minute I finished it, it was like a ton of lead lifted right off of my shoulders, my head and my shoulders. I mean, I, I didn't realize I weighed that much. He was instantly delivered from cocaine and soon lost his desire for alcohol. I had a hold of my daughter's hand, and I looked at her. And I think the first thing God ever said to me was, John, you know those treasures you were looking for? All that money you wanted to make, all that, those riches? Here they are right here, and I've been taking care of them. Now you start. John put music aside. In time, he landed a job as a mining engineer. Life began to look pretty good. Well, you've got a beautiful home. You have a great church, great job. Your kids are going to uh, Christian school. Um, this must be the American dream. And all of a sudden, goes, nope, don't be content with this. This is not it. This is not it. I got a phone call from Bob Hartman, which was totally out of the blue. Bob wanted him to front as the lead singer for Petra. The only way to ever sing rock and roll is if it was in a Christian band like Petra. You're going out because you have, you have a, a, a reason to do it. You want to see lives change. In his 20 years with Petra, the band brought home four Grammys and 10 Dove Awards. Then in 2005, Petra said its farewells. John's brand of retirement includes working on a solo album and perfecting his woodworking skills. Looking back over everything, 
everything. Which is really hard. <laughs> That's a lot of years, what, buddy. What, what does your story say about the true character of God? He never gave up on me when he should have. I know that I'm going to see, see God, but not because of what I did. I sin every day. But the blood of God, God's blood was shed for me. That's good enough to get me there.